and you're welcome back. It's time for Off the Press now. And we're beginning with the Punch newspaper this morning. And the headline really follows from what we talked about yesterday regarding Ogun State pensioners basically blocking the entrance to the Secretariat because of their pensions that have been owed to the tune of 60 something million or billion naira. And the Punch says pensioners hardship worsens as states owe backlogs of gratuities. Kano, Ikiti, Enugu, Benue pensioners hard hit. State sides cash crunch. Pensioners threaten to sue Southwest governors over consequential adjustment. Above that, on the Punch newspaper, 62% of enterprises use mobile banking, says MBS. Rex says National Assembly's approval unnecessary for e-transmission of results. Reps raise panel to probe leakage of classified documents. Why we continue to borrow, says federal government. September bonds oversubscribed. Army lists soldier dehumanizing female copper for trial, says assault, embarrassing and unfortunate. Fanny Kayade, exchanged wife, sues ex-husband, IG, demands 800 million naira. Inflation, regulatory costs, push banks operating expenses, to 874 billion naira. Pandemonium as Lagos motorcyclists kill policemen, destroy patrol vehicle. 25 bandits kidnapped Kaduna Baptist students, says suspects blame desperation. And those are the stories there on the Punch newspaper. All right, and now on the um, Daily Sun, big one there says we've identified and blocked terrorist financiers, says uh, the federal government. PDP rights UN alleges human rights abuse in Nigeria. Yoruba nation leader Akintoye accuses federal government of sponsoring pro-Buhari march in uh, the United Nations. And also CNPP defends Emefiele, slams PDP. Federal government may file fresh charges against Igboho, that's also on the sun. And uh, also, only justice and equity can end Biafra agitation, says Governor Otom. Uh, we can also find on the Daily Sun, collection of value added tax by FIRS remains, says the government. And also, critics of Buhari's borrowing are insincere, says the minister. PDP, we've, uh, we have no mandate to zone offices of president and VP. And that is from um, Uguayi's committee, says assignment is on party offices. Those are the big ones on the Daily Sun newspapers this morning. Let's look at the leadership newspaper, State of the Economy. APC PDP clash over call for Emefile's resignation. Ethnic youth leaders slam opposition. CNPP, other political parties disown PDP. The federal government says they're building world-class infrastructure with loans. PDP convention, 6,000 delegates to decide new leaders. But Jabiamila says Nigeria education system well funded. A study shows that immunity can't prevent COVID-19 infection. And lastly, security economy top PMB's address at the United Nations General Assembly today. And on the Daily Independent, PDP zoning committee meeting ends in deadlock, adjourns to September 30 to meet governors and other stakeholders. 6,000 delegates to elect new NWC members in October. Also, reps ask CBN to reverse ban on sale of Forex to BDCs. 5G network ready in January, says uh, January 2022, says Pantami. And also, Fanny Coyote's ex-lover slams 800 million Naira suit against him, IGP, and others. Federal government to file fresh charges against Sunday Boho. And also, his naysayers criticizing Buhari for borrowing are insincere, says Lai Mohammed. Tax dispute. Tribunal fixes ruling date as multi-choice faults FIRS fi uh, figure. We can also find on the Daily Independent, reps to probe alleged leakage of classified security documents. Uh, UNGA, PDP acts UN to query Buhari on terrorism, rights violations, and corruption. I think those are all the stories that we can find on the Daily Independent uh, front page this morning. Mm. Uh, just before, of course, our guest joins us, I think well, some of the big ones uh, this morning are with regards uh, fresh charges uh, to be filed, you know, on uh, Sunday. Behold, I'm not sure what exactly they will be, but of course, uh, we'll, we will be following up 
uh, to see uh, where that leads. And mm -hmm. also on the Daily Sun this morning, it says we've identified and blocked terrorist financiers, says the federal government. This one, of course, will make headlines all through the weekend, you know, uh, you know as Nigerians are eager to see where this heads. Um, you know, if you remember a couple of days ago, there was uh, a little bit of controversy with uh, Femi Adishino saying that the government is not eager to name and shame uh, some of these terrorist financiers. There's, you know, also some investigative reports here and there that are, are not verified yet, so I wouldn't share uh, concerning <coughs> this. But of course, um, it's, um, you know, important to continue to encourage the federal government to do what is necessary um, to ensure that uh, some of these people who are funding terrorism um, are, you know, exposed, you know, and arrested and, you know, prosecuted. Um, one of the ways that, I'm, that everyone, I think everyone knows one of the ways to end terrorism or to, you know, to tackle crime is to cut out its funding. And if they no longer are able to source funding, then it's difficult for them to feed or to buy weapons or to finance, you know, the activities. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important, you know, and, and you know, I've said it repeatedly that we've had more than 10 years um, of this fight against insurgency, more than 10 years to be able to, you know, um, make certain arrests, you know, to uncover whose accounts these uh, funds have been passing through, who are the people who have been delivering cash to these bandits, how have they been using, you know, getting money to finance the activities, to buy weapons, to buy motorcycles, to, you know, basically finance the activities. There has to be some explanation as to why in 10 years Nigeria has not been able to arrest five people or 20 or publicly, at least, mm -hmm. um, show that there have been, you know, 100 people who have been accused of financing terrorism in Nigeria. Um, we shouldn't have waited for the United Arab Emirates. We shouldn't have waited for Saudi Arabia or for the United States mm -hmm. to help us with, you know, finding these things out. It's, it's, it's one of the easiest things that the federal government has continued, you know, has continuously failed to do in the last 10 years. And it gives birth to that narrative that, yes, you know, there might be people in government who do not want these things to be exposed or to be revealed. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how it goes. Um, they have an opportunity now to... Name and shame, same way they did with the NSAS protesters, same way they did with every other situation in the country that has been against government. Mm. They have an opportunity now to, you know, uh, you know, show where they really stand with regards to their fight against insurgency. Interesting. All right. Let's now welcome our guest, um, Jide Johnson. He's a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning, Jide Johnson. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with Jonathan um, Osarogi. Okay. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers so, all over the world. There are lots of stories on the papers this morning. There's the one on the Punch newspaper that says, you know, pensioners have been owed salaries for over 70-something months. And the federal government is saying that there's actually um, no money, the economy is poor. But the head of service have said that all pensioners have been paid and that the ones who haven't been paid have not completed their verification exercise. Um, there's a the one we see um, regarding on the Daily Independence where Reps is asking the CBN to reverse the ban of sale of Forex to the BDCs because of its impact on our foreign exchange. Um, the Daily Sun federal government says that they have identified um, the blocked terrorist financiers. Um, there's also the vast controversy still there. APC PDP clashing over calls for Emefele to resign um, over, you know, the allegations that Emefele had supervised, you know, looting of funds in the CBN. Where would you like to start, Chief Johnson? Well, um, let's start with the, with the story on terrorists. And federal government said that they're not interested in naming terrorists. And we will see the approach of the federal government in dealing with people that have destroyed this country mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, that have destroyed lives and property, that have encroached on our territorial integrity. You see the way the federal government treat them, particularly the Boko Haram, where they are rehabilitated. You know, we've spoken about this story and Ferg federal government with the special advisor the president coming out that they are not interested in naming and shaming them whereas these people have been maiming and destroying nigeria it's quick for federal government to deploy its resources to arrest sunday Bo. it's quick for federal government to deploy its resources to arrest nam the canoe it's quick for the federal government to respond quickly and swiftly to protest across Nigeria at any point in time. But here, you see the federal government reacting diplomatically to terrorists. Then we've identified, they've just identified and blocked 
So those ones should not be arrested. Those that have committed crime against humanity, they have committed crime against this nation, and they have committed crime against good conscience. And they've only identified and block and block them. You know our federal government quickly reacted to the leaders of the NSAS protest. How the account and how the central bank quickly gave directive for the accounts to be blocked. And now they were all identified. And now people started crying. Nobody has cried that they blocked his own account. Mm. God will help us in Nigeria. Because if you are inconsistent in your approach, if you have a sleep, <clears throat> where some people commit criminal offense, you use your hand, terrorist at a destination, you use your hand to pamper them, rehabilitate them back in the society. Where others are making an attempt to call for self-determination, you use the big stick and sledge armor to deal with them. It's just um, shows the direction with which the government is is going. On the collection of VAT by federal, federal government still insisting that, okay, they will still collect the VAT. Well, the Supreme Court will decide that, whether it's under the exclusive list or whether it's under the concurrent list or whether collection of VAT is under um, residual list. But the more uh, this thing goes on, the more irritated Nigerians are and the more, um, the more shocking it becomes to see the, 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 the imbalance and the injustice that exists in Nigeria as a nation. And I think there's a need for, for us to look at this. Because it, it, if it happens in this area, it happens in every sector. Mm. There's a need for us to look at the principle of federal character, educationally disadvantaged state and the rest of it, and sharing of resources on the basis of local government. Because um, the structure of the local government, the local government in the first instance were created by military fiat. And we know where majority of those that were in the Supreme Military Council, where they used to come from in the past. Because if you look at the structure of Nigeria, something is really wrong. Some people are at an advantage and some people are at disadvantage. And we can't, you know, Zig Ziglar said something. For us to do the same thing, the same manner, and expect to get a different result. Is the beginning of insanity. We break every principle of development and growth. We break every principle of unity. And yet, we think Nigeria can be united. We think Nigeria can be one. The situation whereby my own child will score 245, he will not get admission into what you call a unity school. And the child of my friend from Kara Namada will score five, he will get admitted into the school. Fast forward 20 years, when they want to be employed, the one that scored two will be employed. Mm -hmm. My son that scored 245 will not be employed. So there are injustices at various levels. Our generation might live with it. Generation coming after us might live with it. But it's just a matter of time. One generation will wake up and we ask questions. You only have one Sunday, boo. You only have one in America. At that particular point in time, you have millions of Sunday, boo. You mm -hmm. have millions of... Um, of, 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 of Namdi, um, um, Namdi Kanu. If we don't address the many injustices that exist in this nation, in this contraption, because Nigeria is a contraption. Nigeria is not a creation of, of Nigeria. It was a creation of the colonial government. And that's why um, um, you could see that some people in the north have affinity with people in the Niger Republic. Some people in the southwest have affinity with people in the Republic of Benin. And some people in the southeast, particularly in Akwaibong, Cross River State, they still have their kid and kin in Cross River. That's why they took Bakasi to Cameroon. They still have affinity with people in Cameroon. Same with people in Yola. In actual sense, if not for extension, the uh, Yola, the Adama of Yola, will have been in Cameroon, the bulk of his. I remember that in 2015, constituted, um, 2014, where he said that the large part of his empire, that's the Adama. Um, um, the, the, the traditional rule of Adam, I can't call his title now. The bulk of his empire is, 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 is in Cameroon, that if Nigeria is not okay, he can move back to Cameroon. So people will wake up to ask, to ask, to ask, right. to ask for that. Because yes. I don't think federal government should be going to court on this matter. It's to invite the governors, have a national council of state meeting over that matter and resolve this issue. Mm. And then if there is a bill for them to come up with a bill, they take the bill to the national assembly to resolve to resolve this issue politically, and so that we can be our brothers and brothers, brothers. Right. Keep Johnson. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know, since we're, you already mentioned Sunday, Bo, I, I think you may want to go on with that same uh, discussion. It says on the Daily Independent, the federal government is to file fresh charges against um, Sunday, Bo. So quickly respond well, to I that. Did. He's still in Benin well, Republic. I, well, are they going to file charges against those that are sponsoring terrorists? Well, uh, well, to be fair, uh, uh, it, it says on the on the um, Daily Sun that uh, we've identified and blocked terrorist financiers, and that's from the federal government also. Well, I can do. Why can't they do the same for Sunday Go? Sunday Go sponsoring terrorism. No, what I'm saying is that I don't support criminality, but don't treat some with kid gloves and don't use late armor for some. That's just it. The inconsistency of government in dealing with insurgency, in dealing with banditry, in dealing with terrorism, and in dealing with attempt for self-determination or the clamor for self-determination is different. And it, it's clear, it's clear for Nigerians to see that government has a double standard mm -hmm. when it comes to dealing with issue. And it's not good for the polity. It's not good for national conscience. This nation has a conscience, so it's not good. And the citizen can say, uh, I want to go to a story which I read. Um, I don't know, and I've said it. Why would the media be organizing an award? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Because there's a story in the sun. The sun is, the sun, then, Bunu, the governor of Yobi State, that he have time to govern, that yes. has been running APC, how would that person win an award? Said the son award will motivate me to do more. To do what? He has done nothing for his state. He's, he's, he's running both APC and running running his state. So which one do you think will take much preeminence pre and priority? Much priority from him to run one state or to run 36 states, including Federal Capital Territory, managing the party. According to them, the largest party in Africa. That's how PDP deceived itself. And when it became so large, it capsized on within. And some of us have, have, have said that it's just a matter of time. With people jumping into the APC ship, the ship is becoming heavier and heavier. It was something if care is not taken to address some of the issues in Nigeria. So I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I don't understand that. And how this government can go to sleep when you have a story that said that pensioners owed salary for 17 months. Federal government said they do have money. They, they don't have How would you not have money to pay pensioners? Yet we are borrowing money, borrowing money. We can't see the effect of the money we have borrowed. We can't see the, and they have not cut, they have not cut cost of government. No government has reduced its commissioner. We have not reduced, we have not reduced um, the, I don't know. No, I, I just don't understand. All you need to do to see how we waste resources in this country is to look at the convoy of the governor. Hmm. Look at the convoy of ministers. Look at the convoy of commissioners. Look at the convoy of local government chairman. And you ask yourself this question. Where do they get the resources to maintain this recurrent expenditure? Because these are the current expenditure. Not capital project. You see, we break principle and then we expect to get results. People that have worked for the state can get some of the money that they used to maintain the state house of the state across the federation will pay the pensioner. Hmm. Some of the funds the governors use for security that they are looking for security. The security which you can't even see is enough to pay these pensioners. And I don't know whether the conscience of our public officials, their conscience is seared. That they can't see. Well, it's seared. One, you know why? In civilized crime, it's only criminal they use siren to carry. Our public officials love siren. Two, it's only they, 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 they screen their cars. You know those that they screen their cars? Every, every action of our public officers on the road is indicative of criminal tendencies. Because if you look at the way they move, it is, if you watch movies, just watch movies and look at it and see the way they move and compare it with what you have in other clients, then you understand that they don't have someone, 
why would they know that there is pothole on the road? They drive exotic cars. I've said it. Where, which, where, why would you be representing or serving the public and be driving Prado? 2021 model. In 2021. What type of public service is that? What type of mentality is that? And you say you are serving the public. And you are serving the public, you are driving exotic cars. Is that public service? What they should drive should be functional car. Cars that could be easily maintained. But it's there. Let's go. We are not ready at all. In this country, we are not ready for governance and we are not ready for service. Hmm. Because if we are ready, all of these issues will be addressed. Okay. Um, Gina Johnson, final words here on, on this issue, the 2023 elections um, coming up very quickly. And there's still the conversation about e-transmission of results. On the Punch newspaper, on the um, upper left, um, there's a story here. The Ogun resident electoral commissioner is saying that the National Assembly's approval um, is unnecessary for a transmission of results. Um, recall the National Assembly have asked INEC to go ahead and seek approval from the Nigerian Communications Commission, the NCC. But he's insisting that INEC is totally empowered by their constitution to transmit election results electronically without seeking any permission or approval from the NCC. So we, we don't know how long this conversation will continue to go back and forth, but here, here's what it is at this time. There's, there's no how long it will go, Aneta. It's very simple. The, the, third schedule, the third schedule of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria gave INEC his mandate to organize, to provide the election. And so, to organize, supervise, and monitor elections. So, whatever INEC brings in into the organization, the National Assembly does not have. It's just like telling courts that court can stop election. And I've argued, once INEC fixed the date for the election, only force major, a natural factor, will stop it. Nobody can stop it, because that's his mandate. It's like saying somebody going to court and saying that the National Assembly shouldn't make law to stop them from making law. That's practically impossible because that's core function of the National Assembly as enshrined in the Constitution. The Constitution, look, the word that is even used is enshrined in the Constitution. It's enshrined. And once you go to the shrine, you perform the ritual. So it's, 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 it's the ritualistic function of INEC that cannot be taken away from INEC by the courts or by the National Assembly or by the executive arm. When card reader was introduced for the election, or when they started bringing professors to start announcing the result and using people in academic, which provisions? Where did you get the provisions? Or did the Constitution specifically state the date for the election? that every election in Nigeria shall come, shall take place second week in February of the electoral year. No, it's not stated there. It is, that power is given for INEC to fix the date. So what the national, what the resident electoral commissioner said is absolutely right. Mm. All what we just have, what the National Assembly did is legislative rascality. Mm. Legislative mm. rascality, that's what they've just done. It's just an attempt in futility. They are just wasting their time. Okay, Judy because Johnson. As long as INEC is both, well, that's why it's called Independent National Electoral Commission. So, mm. for some of us, we have argued it, and it becomes clear as we go to the election. Those of them that don't want to participate on electronic, electronic transmission of results, um, and let them not participate in the election. When they declare the result, let them sit down at home. Because, you see, we must have, for us to have public governance, we must have free and fair election. You mm -hmm. recall that the last election, there is a sitting senator still serving in the National Assembly whose result was declared under duress. The, the returning officer said that this result, I am declaring this result under duress. Yes. And it's still, it's still there. And nothing has been done to that, to, to that effect. And is that senator serving his people? Because these people get to public office without getting the actual mandate of people as a result of that, they don't represent the people. And we have asked this question, is democracy actually working in Africa? Is democracy working in Nigeria? 
as in the representative democracy because are the people we call representative are they truly the representative of the people are they truly all right judy johnson it's a uh, pleasure to be with you my brother thank you very thank much you. You, know, you have a good you have a good friday uh, i um, i i woke up very very late this morning i went out so i couldn't quickly put on the gem that's what i have to do voice thank you all it's right. all right judy johnson thank have you very a, much for coming have an interesting weekend ahead